Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Melissa Esposito and I am from Italy. I have been teaching mathematics in high school, Itimedi in San Giorgio Cremano, Naples, Italy, for 28 years after graduating in 1994. Um, I am interested in different and various projects, including a twinning project that allow twinning between different European schools. Uh, I am near quality certified educator uh, on CAUT, uh, verified educator on CAUT Academy, and then the puzzle coach and the weekly community leader. I work a lot with the coding and gamification. I am an international speaker about education and a lot of different topics. I am specializing in the sustainable development goals of the 2030 agenda, in particular our goal for ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. I spoke in different international conferences. Uh, I write texts, uh, format videos for www.edboom.it uh, and I write for a website about great mathematicians and maths anecdotes. I continually update on new technologies, teaching methodologies and digital tools to be used to promote learning. The playful approach to, this, to my discipline, to mathematics, accompanied by a passion for teaching has always characterized my mo or modus operandi. Play is a very serious thing, as a John Paul Richard, German writer and pedagogist, says, as it lowers the pupils, affective filters, eliminating their prejudices, and brings them closer to studying and, um, without anxiety, with the serenity, and with a good position, disposition, soul, because the pleasure of learning is one of the most effective re retention strategies. I have to uh, thank uh, uh, IIU for this great opportunity to be a speaker for you. And uh, I want to speak to you about IIU, International Internship University. IIU is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and very reputed in delivering innovative programs. Globally, it is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing a better virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. In a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Payush Pandit Sir, a committed an inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. And now I want to speak to you um, uh, about my topic, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, new technologies, uh, teaching methodologies, uh, and uh, uh, digital tools, tools to be used uh, to promote learning. Let's begin. Educational technology trends, uh, big data, machine learning, and the Internet of Things, I IoT, were the biggest educational uh, technology trends of these years. However, distance learning has become um, the one trend that rules them all. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, has drastically changed the way we teach and learn. The latest uh, ed tech uh, trends are being revolutionized with a strong focus on connectivity, versatility, and student-centered learning. Let's take a look at the latest trends in educational technology. What is educational technology and why should it matter? Many people can recognize that EdTech is devoting technology to promote education. It's true, but not sufficient. The Association for Educational and Communications and Technology has defined EdTech as facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. For educators, EdTech is a concept of transforming traditional book teaching and learning to digital form. For them, the many difference uh, lies in the way knowledge is delivered thanks to technology innovation to make teaching more effective. In short, EdTech is a simply a process of integrated technology into education to build better teaching and learning experiences that result in higher learning outcomes. Here are some common uh, um, 
advantages of uh, uh, edtech, innovative uh, teaching uh, methods. Uh, uh, technology is an innovative innovation of humans. So when an educator can apply technology to teaching, it is also innovative. Edtech allows um, teachers to provide multimedia to address different learning styles, such as animation, live video, and etc. Uh, we first of all we can improve collaborative teaching. T uh, technology uh, has made it possible to have for everyone to stay connected. Students and teachers connect, discuss, and share their opinions and act upon situations collaboratively. Teaching and learning process. Uh, firstly, edtech benefits uh, how teachers uh, teach, both online and offline. Secondly, edtech changes. Uh, the way students approach learning. EdTech makes uh, learning more fun and exciting for students. When we feel engaged in learning, we learn better, uh, remember better, and also apply knowledge to real life. Lastly, uh, technology makes education smarter, more effective. Smart educators are those who can create teaching from what learners want to learn. Teachers can do these fascinating things only with the technology. And that's why we need ed tech in life. Here I select the, the latest educational uh, technology trends. Let's begin. First, e-learning. Distance learning became the top of um, 2020 educational technology trend overnight uh, because of school closures. This led to a rising demand for online educational uh, platforms. E-learning is education or training delivered uh, electronically. With e-learning, educational content is delivered to learners throughout computers, laptops, tablets or smartphones. Learners can choose what they need to learn quickly and easily, wherever they are. Many e-learning courses include animation, podcasts, and videos that create a multimodal and practical learning experience. Educators are using the advantages of technology to make learning more effective. That's why more and more online embedded learning courses are produced nowadays. There are a lot of online learning platforms, you can teach your students in real time, synchronous, or uh, via live stream, or group meetings using Zoom, or Microsoft Teams, or Google Meet. Or your, uh, you can use recorded asynchronous uh, methodologies with a wide range of media uh, and digital functions uh, available to reach lessons. Second, video assisted learning. Video assisted learning has become more and more popular as classroom displays. The video day is no longer a television of a troll on a trolley being wheeled in a, into a class. With the internet and digital devices, every day can be a video day. Uh, this trend is also booming in distance learning conditions, which students uh, learn throughout computer screens. Animated videos are extremely beneficial to reach lessons and make a content comprehensible. It uh, improves students' uh, outcomes and reduces uh, teachers' workload. Video assisted learning is a growing strategic teaching approach in many modern classrooms. Educational videos are now more accessible than ever, and teachers are increasingly making use of these readily available resources. But with increased the use of screen time comes increased the controversy and the debate. While videos are great for things like social emotional learning, cognitive ability and inclusivity, if not properly utilized in the appropriate setting, the videos will not be used to their full potential and can even hinder academic performance. Video assisted learning and its core is simply using videos in lessons. But as the technology has advanced, uh, so as the dynamic between the student and teacher. This means that nowadays many schools are behind the times where all students simply strive for the same goal of just a job and merely just sit quietly and listen. We want them to become innovators and creators to argue and the question to the teams around them and to grow up to be better well-rounded and happy individuals. Third, we, I, we can speak about uh, big data will get bigger. The, the learning experience needs to be personalized. And with the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandem pandemic and online learning booming, we now have bigger data uh, information than ever. 
uh, instructional designers have relevant information about learners' experiences to customize and present the course in a suitable format. Do you know what is uh, artificial intelligence? Less than a decade after helping the Allied forces the, with the World War, uh, the Second World War, by breaking the Nazi encryption machine Enigma, mathematician Alan Turing changed the history a second time with a simple question Can machines think? Turing's uh, uh, 1950 paper, Computing uh, uh, Machinery and Intelligence, and its subsequent Turing test establishes the fundamental goal of uh, envision of artificial intelligence. At its core, AE is the branch of a computer science that aims to answer Turing's question in the affirmative. It is endeavor to replicate or simulate human intelligence in machines. The expansive goal of artificial intelligence has given a rise to many questions and databases. So much that, so that no singular definition of the field is universally accepted. Artificial intelligence now is the in, in thing in, in the United States at the tech market. AE could become the primary tenant and grow by more than 45%. AE can automate basic activities in education, like grading. It's now possible for teachers uh, to automate grading of the multiple choice and fill in the blank questions, for example. Both learners and educators could benefit from AE students, uh, could get uh, help from AE tutors when teachers are too busy to take care of everyone. That's why some schools use AE systems to monitor student progress. And then learning analytics, what is? The current landscape of learning analytics has dramatically expanded, especially for higher education. Learning analytics allows educators to measure um, and report student learning just by the web. From that, it's possible for them to better understand and optimize the learning. When teachers read inside from students' learning processes, they can improve the knowledge and skill acquisition of their students. For instance, the knowledge uh, teachers are able to see what type of information that students enjoy most and use it more in their following lessons. And then we can speak about STEM. STEM based programs are the new edtech improvement over the STEM programs. This is new trend uh, of edtech ed applies meaningful science, technology, engineering, art, the new element, and math content to solve real world problems throughout hands so on learning activities and creative design. STEM helps students become increasingly curious about the world around them. For far too long in education, we have been working with the presumption of teaching to ensure our students get a, jo a good job. But uh, what does it look like? We are preparing students for jobs that don't even exist. We are at a point where there is not only possible, but imperative that we facilitate learning environments that are fluid, dynamic, and relevant. None of us go outside and look at the, uh, a tree and say, that's a tree, uh, so that's a science, or the sky is blue, that, so that's art. Uh, our world is a beautiful, complex, and integrated tapestry of learning all in its own right. Why do we believe that we have the ability or the right to box it in behind brick walls and classroom doors in a place called the school? Integrating concepts, topics, standards, and assessments is a powerful way to disrupt the typical course of events for our students and to help change the merry-go-round of school. It takes what we do when we open the doors to the real world and places those uh, uh, some practices uh, in our cycles of teaching and learning. So we can finally remove the bricks walls uh, and classroom doors to get at the art of learning. A recent research shows that SAM is a promising approach to positively impacting uh, student achievement and teacher efficacy in a 
2016 study, researchers investigated the impact of, of STEM lessons on physical science and learning in grades three to five in high poverty elementary schools in an urban district, finding indicating that students who received just nine hours of STEM instruction made improvements in their science achievement. Another study from uh, 2014 shows uh, that the, co the connecting STEM and literary can positively impact cognitive development, increase the literacy and math skills, and that students reflect meaningfully uh, on their work or, and that, on that, uh, their peers. Social media learning. Have you ever thought that the social media would be a part of the learning process? Uh, whenever a, every student, both young and major, spends so much time on social media, uh, why don't we turn it to, into a powerful tool uh, to enhance learning? It's how the idea to use social media for teaching came about. Many educational institutes have started using social media as a communication tool in which students can interact with others uh, easily. Students can share study materials discuss with others in a group or easily comment on someone else's posts. In conclusion, we can uh, say that uh, keep in mind that technology has renewed its whole teaching and learning process. And now let's speak about uh, teaching methods. Every student, teacher and classroom is different. And that's one of the wonderful things about the learning process. As a teacher, you will try new teaching methods and find out what works best for your students. Why teaching methods continue to, to evolve? Today's teacher face lots of challenges and have lots of opportunities. First, the shift to remote learning exposed the inequality in classrooms, but also offered new ways for students to engage with interactive learning experiences. Second, new ed tech innovations connect the classroom learning with the real world digital skills. Third, changing ideas about education and pedagogy, about the new learning objectives like social emotional learning, differentiation and personalized learning. Don't be afraid to try new ways for students to learn and stay engaged or not. And now I'll show you some teaching methods, the most common teaching methods. First, direct instruction. Direct instruction is when you explicitly convey concepts and skills to students rather than letting them learn on their own. While it might seem odd to start off a list of modern teaching methods with a technique that's been the foundation of traditional classroom instruction for hundreds of years, direct instruction allows you to layer or more recent teaching strategies. According to research, direct instruction is one of the most effective teaching strategies, a told often misunderstood. Students who are told using a direct instruction method perform better than in reading, uh, maths and spelling that do, than those who weren't. If you have no clue what direct instruction is all about, you have come to the right place. This is and the direct instruction is a teacher direct teaching method. This means that the teacher stands in front of a classroom and presents the information. The teacher gives explicit guided instructions to the students. So isn't that how everything has always been told in a classroom? Not entirely. Nowadays, experimenting in education is hot as teachers find uh, that not all students benefit from listening to a teacher talk all day and not all lessons are best told throughout direct instruction. Teachers now match the type of instruction to the task. Using direct instruction is effective when it suits the skill students have to learn. For example, students attend a classroom lecture about ecological uh, diversity. Then watch a video from a local conservation group about the efforts to preserve the local habits, habitats. This direct instruction helps you to explain the requirements of a service learning project they are doing to clean up the park near the school, for example. And then flip the classrooms. 
Our homework at home lectures at school, that's how it's usually uh, done. But in flipped classrooms, uh, students absorb information on their own time and use in-class time for hands-on learning and problem solving. Also known as a blended learning, Flip the Classroom uh, embraces new ed tech innovations and prioritizes face-to-face learning activities in order to boost student engagement. It helps students move at their own pace and gives you more time to provide one-on-one -on -one support where needed. Flip the Classroom can give students valuable hands-on experience. One of the most exciting adv advancements in the modern classroom is flipped learning. It thinks uh, on the idea that students learn more effectively by using uh, class time for small groups uh, activities and individual attention. Teachers then assign students lecture materials and presentations to be viewed at home or outside of the classroom day, prioritizing activity learning. According to Carrie Armstrong, co-founder of the Flip and the Learning Network, Flip and the Learning is all about creative opportunities for active engagement. It's a pedagogical approach in which direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the, learn, uh, to the individual learning space and the resulting group space is transformed into a dynamic, interactive learning environment where the educator guides the students and as they, they apply concepts and engage creatively in the subject matter, she explains. The flipped learning approach is gaining attraction every year, according to a 2014 survey from the flipped learning network. 78% uh, of teachers said that uh, uh, they had flipped the lesson, and 96% of those who tried it said that they uh, would recommend it to other uh, educators and teachers. This indicates uh, that flipped learning inspires teachers to update uh, traditional methods and bring new technology into their classrooms throughout the use of video, screencasts, and more. But what exactly does uh, this mean for classroom teachers? First, they are able to spend more time with distracting students where, while allowing more advanced learner, learners uh, the freedom to work ahead. It's a large scale differentiated instruction built into the curriculum at ever, every opportunity. For example, students read an article about a specific scientific procedure at home, then come to class and do a hands on experiment. They write up uh, their findings and give a presentation about the results. While they work, you observe student work to spot learning gaps you can address in future lessons. And now I'll speak about um, uh, my favorite teaching methods. I use it uh, always and often in my, in my, during my lessons in the classroom. Uh, Game-based learning and gamification. Game-based learning, or GBL, is a modern teaching method that uses the power of games to define and support learning outcomes. Game-based learning actually uses games to teach as opposed to gamification, which uses game elements like leaderboards and points to motivate learning. Educational games promote engagement, provide immediate rewards and feedback, and harness the power of healthy competition to keep kids and students uh, excited to learn. Game-based learning is a teaching method that uses the power of games to define and support learning outcomes. A GBL environment achieves these throughout educational games that have elements such as engagement, immediate rewards, and healthy competition. Also, that while students play, they stay motivated to learn. The great thing about game-based learning is everyone can reap its benefits from preschool all the way up to post-secondary education and beyond. Where and now doesn't matter, either students can learn with online games, in person with the physical objects, independently, or as part of a team. There are a lot of game-based learning platforms designed to help students to learn. And gamification. 
If you are looking for a way to turn learning into a more fun and engaging process, gamification is the most suitable teaching method trend. Students can learn and practice while they are joined in on exciting game activities. Gaming elements help create a funny and positive learning environment for learners. The adoption of gamification is most popular in some education sectors. It's because kids are quickly engaged in gaming videos or getting high school schools in a game. However, it doesn't mean that either education or corporate training doesn't need fun elements to improve the engagement level of learners. The gamification theory in education is that learners learn best when they are also having fun. Not only this, they also learn best when they have goals, targets, and achievements to reach for, for of course, in a way the learner still perceives as fun because of the addictive features of video games that intrigue children and also adults and get them hooked. It's only natural that uh, we see similar engagement results when these game-based uh, elements are applied to learning materials. Gamification in learning involves using game-based elements such as point scoring, peer competition, teamwork, uh, score tables to drive engagement, help students assimilate new information uh, and test their knowledge. It, it uh, can apply to school-based subjects, but is also used widely in self-teaching apps and courses, showing that the effects of gamification do not stop when we are adults. Teachers and parents can implement gamification in various ways uh, across countless subject areas. Uh, throughout uh, to the many schools already utilize uh, apps and educational games via computers and tablets. Uh, it doesn't uh, whole ever to be about technology. I like game-based learning, which involves students making their own games or playing commercially made video games. Gamification is simply bringing game-based elements that make this platform popular and integrating them into other activities within the home classroom. Uh, some examples uh, of game elements that can be used to engage and motivate learners include the narrative, immediate feedback, fun, scaffold learning with the challenges that increases, mastery, for example, in the form of leveling up, progress indicators, for example, throughout points, pages, uh, leaderboards, also called the PBLs, social connection, player control, a classroom that contains some or all of these elements can be considered a gamified classroom. The best combination are the ones that create sustained engagement, consider the unique needs of the learners, and do more than just use points and levels to motivate players. The most effective gamification system make use of other elements such as narrative and the connection with the fellow players learners to really capture the learner's interest. And now let's speak about student-centered learning and teacher-centered learning. Above all, uh, student-centered learning involves students in decisions about their learning. It connects the students' interest to the classroom and builds an assessment framework to help them uh, understand why the material is important and how it fits into everyday life. Teachers can put student-centered learning to use in their classrooms to increase students' motivation, help students take ownership over their learning, and build strong relationships. Three ways to think about the role of teachers in student-centered learning are resources, mentors, and guides. Student-centered learning helps give them the tools they, have, they need to engage with the new topics, make a connection between topics and directly relate to classroom lessons with what they are experiencing outside of school. For example, students can read a novel about a specific scientific discovery and submit a book report or create a budget for marketing a made-up product in math class. Work with the students to find out what they like how they learn best and how the project will be assessed. 
And uh, what about teacher-centered learning? It is most similar to traditional classroom learning. Students learn mostly independently throughout lectures and receive clear instructions and Lumix from a central authority figure. It is useful to provide a foundation for other works. Most modern classrooms prioritize collaboration, group work, and student exploration for good reasons. Teacher-centered um, learning, for example, can still be engaging uh, and motivating for students. If you are starting a new novel study, um, why not to have a student journal independently about what they think uh, will happen in the story or what questions they have uh, about uh, the concept? The main difference between teacher-centered and learner-centered approach is that in teacher-centered approach, students focus is uh, completely on the teacher, whereas in learners, center in the classroom, both students and educators have equal focus. In a teacher-centered classroom, the teacher talks ex excessively and students continue to listen. When it comes to activities, a teacher-student collaboration is discouraged, unlike inside a classroom that operates with a learner-centered approach, allowing educators and students to interact equally and collaborate with each other. And uh, let's speak about personalized learning. It is an educational approach that tailors learning around individual students' needs, interests, and abilities. It helps you differentiate instruction for each student. Personalized learning reaches students of all levels. Personalized learning uh, centers around the task of connecting a learner's provision knowledge, experiences, and abilities with the training materials that will link that uh, understanding with the new information. The simple example of a personalized learning would be when uh, an instructor provides a learning material with the proper content and context and in the best way for the learner. This is done uh, by using the existing knowledge that the instructor has of the student. The instructor understands how best to connect the learner's previous experiences and abilities to the new information, building links between existing knowledge and new information. Proper learning material is content that is relevant to the learner's previous experiences. The best way for each learner is delivery of information in such as a in such a way that the learner is able to acquire the new information easily. This could be the type of material, video, text, or interactive games, for example. The time spent, the, the amount of material covered in each session, and the order in which the information, new information is explained. This, is, uh, this will vary the, for each learning, learner, as everyone has different learning styles. For example, if you are starting a new unit, pretty teach for the foundational concepts and use a quick journal entry to gauge understanding. Then assess students throughout the unit with the quick quizzes, presentations, and assignments before a final test to ensure every student achieves mastery. And now what is project-based learning? It is a, a student-centered teaching method to encourage learning throughout real-world questions or challenges. The question should be, be open-ended. You give students the method of investigation and any supplementary materials, and they go off and work with your support as needed. Project-based learning helps students develop critical thinking with the real-world experience they use for the rest of their life. Students work on a project uh, over an, ex an extended period of time, from a week up to a semester. That engages them in solving a real world problem or answering a complex question. They demonstrate their knowledge and skills by creating a public product or presentation for a real audience. As a result, students develop deep content knowledge as well as critical thinking collaboration, creativity, and communication skills. Project-based learning unleashes a contagious creative energy among students and teachers. And in any case, you are looking for a more formal definition. Project-based learning 
is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an authentic, engaging and complex question, problem or a challenge. For example, project-based learning options are many and varied, but can include planning a school event, researching the history of a simple machine, designing a playground for their school using the geometry skills. And what is it, uh, problem-based learning? It is like project-based learning with one major difference. It gives students the problem at the start of a topic before they have been told some of the relevant concepts. Students receive an open-ended question and they find their own information resources. Your role as a teacher is to provide the materials and guidance when needed and explain the evaluation process. For example, a problem-based learning project could involve students pitching ideas and creating their own business plans to solve a societal need. Students could work independently or in a group to conceptualize, design and launch their innovative products in front of classmates and community leaders. For example, for an environmentally friendly problem-based learning project, start with a topic like classroom waste or ecology. Students can research and find solutions and you can implement them together. What is uh, collaborative learning? In collaborative learning, uh, uh, students are working on a common uh, uh, task and doing the same actions, but they are working together to boost group performance and amplify learning. Uh, it's, it is a kind of a, uh, or like a bucket of roses. So while they might all have the same colors and shape on their own, together a bucket uh, is more than a sum of its parts. Students are going to need to know how to work with the peers at any age, and collaborative learning can help them start building valuable team building skills. For example, use brain writing as a collaborative learning activity that involves everyone, introduce a discussion topic ahead of class, have students brainstorm ahead of time and submit ideas animosely or in person. Everyone reads the submissions before, the, before class and uses them as a jumping cough point for class discussion. Even the shyest student may feel empowered to speak their mind. And what is it, uh, cooperative learning? Cooperative learning is a bunch of wild flowers, each one unique, but contributing to something beautiful. In cooperative learning projects, each student plays a different role in a structured group activity and makes a unique contributions to the success of the group. Your role as a teacher is to facilitate the groups and guide their research. Cooperative learning teachers, uh, students, um, that every uh, group members effort are important to both individual and group success. Cooperative learning strategies offer students the possibility to learn by applying knowledge in an environmental more similar to the one they will encounter in their future work life. Teachers get the change to work on core, or co, on core competencies and on students' communication and soft skills, which are valuable for students' success in life and work integrating them in school curricula. Strategies uh, can be used both in pairs and groups and are designed to fulfill all the so-called PIES principles, positive interdependence, individual accountability, equal participation, and simultaneous interaction. For example, in Anch learning with a jigsaw activity, each student belongs to two groups, a home group and an expert group. Present students with a topic to research. Students will work with their expert groups to learn about a specific topic. Then return to their home group and present their finds. Uh, in conclusion about uh, teaching methodologies, we can say there is no best way to teach. There are, however, some general guidelines and you can follow to make sure your instruction is as effective as possible. First, explain a thing using multiple methods. 
Second, expect students to do their best uh, and not accept less. Third, get to, to know your students. Fourth, use modern teaching methodologies designed to engage students. Fifth, use individual paired and group activities equally. For a matter of time, I will not told you about uh, other teaching methods such as uh, kinesthetic learning, inquiry-based learning, thinking-based learning, competency-based learning, discussion-based learning, social-emotional learning, immersive learning with virtual reality and augmented uh, reality, and many others. And now I want to speak to you about some apps uh, for teachers. For the list below, I look for apps that are really useful for different teaching methods. They are apps that allow you to combine several resources. First, I want to speak to you about Edpuzzle. It is an easy and effective way to deliver videos in your classroom um, uh, or how to sound in your classroom. It's not just a video distributor. Uh, with Edpuzzle, you can make the video come to life by adding audio notes and questions. It makes uh, it uh, easy to add comments to videos and the questions make the video more interactive. You can use it to empower critical thinking when students watch a video. Start by creating a free account on the puzzle and check out some of these existing videos to get a, a sense of how teachers are using it. And the puzzle search will suggest high quality videos from sites of, uh, such as YouTube, Khan Academy, TED, uh, TED Talks, and Vimeo. There is also an, uh, the option uh, to choose a content from the curriculum uh, library, which is a, a collection of videos organized by content area. Play around uh, with the features to make sure that you, your edit uh, uh, sticks. Some videos uh, can uh, only be shared and not edited. Uh, and of course, remember to preview all video content uh, for uh, be uh, right. One way to get started with your content creation is to use the puzzle for pre-teaching. Pay videos with text uh, and extra info to support students preparing uh, for an activity or lesson. Use the voiceover feature to add a few quick uh, checks to read aloud videos to engage and support striking readers, introducing a vocabulary, uh, words along with the pronunciation, definition, and synonyms. For a math center, so record yourself teaching a concept and have students stop the for practice and submit the answers. Want to flip your classroom? Let the students uh, use the tool to create a video lesson and share some of the best creations for their peers to complete them on their own. Then go into depth in class and to expand upon what students learn from remixing the videos. Second, I want to speak to you about book widgets. It allows you to make interactive lessons and provides strong digital campaigns of all kinds of interactive exercises. You just have to add your own content. Choose between more than 40 different widgets or exercises to engage your students. Make your own adapted coursework uh, crossword riddles, videos, uh, jigsaw puzzle, web uh, quests, quizzes, uh, timelines, and much more. Just share a link with your students and they can start working. Then there is Simbaloo. It helps you to organize your web or classroom resources in only one place. There is, these resources are stored on a dashboard in the form of buttons. This dashboard can be set as uh, your own page, so you can find all the resources you need immediately. It gives you the possibility to personalize the dashboard. For teachers, Simbaloo has a special section that gives you the possibility to create your own learning paths or lesson plans. Just share the link or classroom code with your students and let them discover the learning path independently. And then there is Brain Pop. It creates uh, animated resources that support teachers and engage students in school, at home, and on mobile devices. Their content includes movies, quizzes, games, mobile apps, activity pages, and much more. The content covers hundreds of topics within math, science, social studies, English, technology, art and music, and art. 
Brain pop allows students to take some actions after seeing the explained uh, video, such as write about it or draw about it, play a game, and much more. And now let's speak about uh, other apps. Can, uh, TED-Ed uh, is a TED's youth and educational initiative. TED-Ed wants to celebrate the ideas of teachers and students around the world. Everything they do is uh, with only one goal, supporting uh, learning. They produce a growing library of original animated videos and provide an international platform uh, for teachers to create their own interactive lessons. All the videos made uh, by ted -Ed and other teachers are mostly short videos that don't last longer than uh, five minutes. It's uh, very help helpful uh, with defining uh, resources and helping you to explain something. Khan Academy started out with its famous YouTube videos. Now you can just uh, go to the AI website and search for a learning video about the topic you want to teach. Choose between subjects such as math, science, and engineering, computing, arts, and humanities, and economics and finance. By singing up, you can create a classroom and invite your students uh, to take some videos lessons and to take a quiz after the rewards. And if you are a language teacher, this app is even, uh, I'm speaking about Duolingo. It is made for teaching foreign languages and was awarded the app of the year in 2013. Google invested a lot in this language app. There, is, there are just so many languages to choose from. Students have to set a goal from five up to 20 minutes a day and pick up if they are a, beginning, a beginner or not. If not, they have to take a placement test. Duolingo focuses on words and their translation and is, it is very intuitive. And now I want to speak to you about one of my favorite apps. It is Kahoot. It is a game-based learning platform that makes it easy to create, share and play game, learning games or trivia quizzes in minutes, unless the fun in the classroom, offices and living rooms. Create a fun learning game in minutes. We can call these Kahoot's, the format and number of questions is up to you. Add videos, images and diagrams to your questions to amplify engagement. Play, count, are the best paid in group settings. To join game, you need a unique pin. If you are the game host, you need a big screen. Players answers on their own uh, devices, while questions are displayed on a sh shared screen. In addiction uh, uh, to live games, you can also send out challenges that the players complete at their own pace. For example, for homework or for remote training. Share. After a game, encourage players to create and share their own codes. With one of the, our training plans for schools or business, you can co-create games with your colleagues and save time on finding the relevant codes for your class uh, or training sessions. Millions of teachers and students unleash the magic of learning with the code, introduce a new topic, review, reward, and collect the data for a formative assessment. And now I want to speak about uh, Nearpod, another great app for me and, um, and that I use very often. With the Nearpod, you can create interactive presentations, add slide by slide, or choose a special way template you can adjust. All those slides make an amazing interactive presentation, especially if you add active live, uh, live quizzes, open-ended questions, exercises, polls, draw questions, and others. What about taking your students on a field trip within your presentation? Just add a slide with a virtual reality experience from Nearpod's library. When your presentation is ready, your student can opt in by entering a code in their Nearpod smartphone app. As a teacher, you are in charge of the presentation. When you switch to another uh, slide, the presentation on your students' uh, phones will also switch uh, to that slide. You can also let uh, your students go throughout the presentation independently. When your students um, have to make a quiz or a poll, they can just do that on their own screen as it is a part of the presentation. The answers are gathered live so you can see immediately what uh, your students answered. 
some of the users are near pod R first, and it's not at the, it's most simple. You can use near pod as a substitute for other presentation tools. Instead of running a PowerPoint or Google Slides, you can utilize Nearpod and make the lesson more interactive. You can even drag and drop your existing Google Slides, slides, PDFs, and PowerPoints into the app for it to instantly create a Nearpod presentation. Then you can select from countless interactive activities and formative assessments. The presentation will be uh, beamed to each student's device in the classroom. You also do not have to re rely on students being able to see the board. Secondly, you personalize the provision and differentiation. Following on from the idea of using the Nearpod as a simple presentation tool, you, can, uh, you could isolate the use of the app uh, to one student or a small group. It could be that you are beaming extra teaching and provisions to particular pupils during a startup. This could be the missing uh, that provides more support for a child with uh, visual impairments. It could provide that extra bit of help for a low attainer in your class. You can also duplicate the lesson and modify to deliver a differentiated content uh, to your students. You can edit these lessons with the personalized formative assessment activities, collect feedback, and inclusive uh, uh, accessibility. Distributing student resources. Using the app to distribute resources is another simple way of using it in the classroom. You can fill your presentation with images or worksheets and ask the students to use the students' notes feature to save the presentation to their drive to access the information later when studying for an exam or completing a work. And uh, live formative assessment. The app can become even more useful if you, if you insert one of the Nearpods many formative assessment activities into your presentation. As a teacher, you can create customized quizzes, polls, open-ended questions, matching pairs, draw it activities, and much more. Use these tool, tools to view their responses and check for students' understanding in real time. The teacher can instantly, instantly gain insight into the classes overall, understanding and make adjustment of the fly. And there is a, a also time to clean the science uh, solar system activity, for example. Uh, one simple way to implement a near point into your daily instruction is to have students do an interactive activity add interest and the excitement to, to everyday learning with the drag and drop, draw it, time to clean, matching pairs, and collaborate uh, board. To review by unit, to use the gamified and multiple choice quits, time to clean. With the collaborate board, the teachers can host classroom discussions uh, with the students using an interactive board to share ideas in real time. What's up? We can use uh, also WhatsApp, yes. WhatsApp or any other social media platform that allows communication, such as a secret Facebook group for your course, can also help you in your teaching. A social media platform offers your students a way to communicate with each other and ask questions about their homework. That way they don't have to, to bother the teacher all the time. And Padlet. After students have viewed an instructional video, it's a good idea to provide them with an opportunity to reflect on the content. Padlet provides teachers with a way to have students not only review and reflect on content, but also collaborate with their peers. And then you can use also Polen everywhere. This is a powerful educational tool which uh, can be used in and outside of the classroom. It is a voting system completely reinvented. As a teacher, you have to set up a question on the web interface or smartphone app. Students can see it on their PC, tablet, or mobile phone. Questions can be polls, but also open-ended questions, such as give me a tip to improve my teaching. Students can respond by using the web app, a text message via the poll everywhere in the smartphone app, or even Twitter. You get instant audience feedback. And Loom is a screen capturing software that tells you to make instructional videos, capture your screen or your front-facing camera and narrate it all at once. 
and then then instantly share it with your students with a simple link. Loom is very easy to, to use. Wakelet is a tool that allows users uh, to take control of the content that interests and inspires them. Wakelet users can save content and organize it in folders or wakes. And it is a great alternative to Padlet or Solify. You and your students can create videos, images, links, and more. It is also a great tool for keeping research projects interactive and social. And then there is a, a book creator. It is a designated to teach students by getting them excited by, about creating their own books on the topics they are learning about. Students uh, can upload images, choose from emojis, uh, make recordings and videos and create, and then share a finished uh, book they wrote. The free version of the tool, uh, the tool allows educators to create a library of 40 books. Book Creator includes many templates to make creating various books uh, uh, projects easy and certain for world. Educators can also use it to access the materials to students interactive form. And I, uh, my presentation is ended. I explained you also about some very interesting uh, tool apps uh, to teaching. And uh, I want to conclude my speech with the, uh, the phrase used by a great man, a great statement that I love a lot. And it's uh, Nelson Mandela. He told uh, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I thank you for listening to me and I see you all, bye-bye. If you have uh, any questions, these are my contacts and my phone number. I thank you again.